We want to welcome you today to our continuing celebration of Easter. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And so we thank you for joining us. One or two announcements before we begin. Again, as always, we encourage you to continue to give generously, if you're able, to our continuing food drive to care for the people of East Pittsburgh and the surrounding communities, as there are many who are falling between the cracks, who are not able to travel out to the drop-off zones for the food that is being distributed so tremendously by our Pittsburgh Food Bank. We consider ourselves partners in this mission to make sure that our residents in our community have enough food so that they might feed their families. So if you would like to participate in that way, we again will have another drop-off time coming up in this next week that will be announced on our Facebook page. You are also welcome to call the church or call me and we will work a time where we can get together and have you drop off that food. If you prefer staying out of uh, the grocery stores, you're welcome to send a check or you're welcome to go online to our website. There is a link there where you can click to a direct donation to the congregation, to the ministry, to the outreach of this congregation. You can designate that if you want to. If you just give it to the general budget of the church, it just goes for general expenses of the church, but you can also designate that for community outreach. This I do promise you, 100% of every donation that you make to community outreach feeds families in our community. One. 100%. There's no overhead costs. There's no, nobody else gets paid for that. It is part of the outreach of the church. It's what we do because we have been blessed. We want to be a blessing with what God has given us. So that's that. And so we hope that you take that into consideration, continue to give generously if you are able. You notice in our congregation, we never ask people uh, to give. We don't put an obligation on you. That's between you and God. Giving should always be done out of gratitude for what God has done. There are no other reasons to give. There should be no other motivation. We are just so grateful, and we want to share the blessing that God has given us. So that's the giving aspect of it. Let me turn to another aspect. People are kind of anxious about getting back to worship. There are many congregations that are already full ahead going into worship uh, mode and back into the services, and that is a dangerous response in this time. We, like most congregations, have a good portion of our members, a great number are senior citizens. We must protect them, and we must be good citizens. We may have a constitutional right as a congregation to get back to uh, worship, and I think there's a good challenge for that, and there are many congregations making that case. But we have a higher obligation to love our neighbors. Okay, did you get that? We might have a constitutional right to get back to worship right now. But we have a higher obligation to love our neighbors. And so we have chosen to make sure that our neighbors and anybody who steps into this building are going to be as much as possible protected. And so our Board of Elders is going through a review process of how we can guarantee that. But this I can tell you, worship will not be the same in our sanctuary for another year. We will not be filling our sanctuary like we have on many occasions for our joint services or our special holiday services or for Christmas services. You can expect until there is, a, uh, uh, until there is some type of cure, some type of vaccine that's able to protect people that we will not have business back as normal. Churches are the number one incubator of this COVID-19. And so just take a look online right now. Take a look at the news reports. Congregations that are opening their doors are spreading this disease. That is not a loving thing to do. We are not going to become a part of the problem. In love, we need to respond as good citizens and good stewards of the people around us. So you will not see this congregation rush to get open again. We will open soon but we will do it safely, and we will do it in a manner that's going to protect you. Let us gather together here then for worship, and so we invite you as we begin with our thanksgiving for baptism today. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Joined together with Christ in the baptism, in the waters of holy baptism, we are therefore clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism that we receive this day. We give you thanks, O God, for we know that in the beginning your Holy Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery to freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and word you claim as us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water and sustain then we know that you sustain us with your life. Above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us, therefore, with your Holy Spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor, praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Jesus Christ and with each other in suffering and in joy that all of your children may be drawn into the bountiful dwelling. Amen. sing our hymn of praise for today above all. Oh, 
Psalm, Psalm 68, the congregation's welcome to respond with every other frame, the even frames. Let God rise, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. Wax melts before the fire. Let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans, Protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you out, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, 
you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Selah. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Describe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. be celebrating Ascension Day, we'll be reading from Luke chapter 24, beginning with the 44th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. So then Jesus said to them, his disciples, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So you open their mind to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus as it is written, that Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. For you are my witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed on, with power from high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them. He returned to Jeru they returned then to Jerusalem with great joy, you're continually in the temple, blessing God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless our time together. Open up our hearts to your word and your will. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we are starting Ascension Day. And uh, you can see the beautiful stained glass windows. And there you go. Today is Ascension Day. I have to get ready for this. Because we have a special presenter for our uh, for our lesson for today and so we ask you to get your thinking caps on and be prepared for the special presenter for today just give me a moment as I get as I as I bring our new presenter in all right please Krista cue us up and set us away
Well, thank you, uh, Pastor Dave, for your help here today. I don't feel like I'm exactly together, but I've done the best that I can. For today is your graduation today. Of course, you know, many of you have been celebrating graduations in a different way during the season. And I get it. It's, it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit crazy. And so I am your presenter for today. My name is Dave. Uh, my name is Professor Dave, by the way. And so I'm here to give your presentation about your graduation day. This is your graduation day to a brand new Christian. And so, as all speeches on graduation day, I'm going to, of course, get into many just uh, perfunctory type of phrases that just go, you know, everybody just kind of listens to, goes in one ear and out the other. But I hope I will present something to you that will be meaningful to you, that will inspire you for the rest of your life after this, your graduation today. So today, again, Ascension Day, but it's your graduation day. And so I'm going to start at the very beginning of your life. You see? Oh, there you go. In the beginning where we're toddlers. Yes, I did ask permission for my daughter to show that. I hope you can see these things behind me. So I'm going to move a little bit over so you can see these wonderful screens behind you. We, when we were born, were babies. We were toddlers, little infants. We are kind of guiltless. And see, this is the way it was in the very beginning of creation. That man, Adam, that woman, Eve... They were together in the garden, surrounded by this beautiful garden that God had made for them. They were babies, they were toddlers, they were infants. And God had made a commitment to them to be in their midst and help raise them to adulthood. But they had such a long ways to go. God also put a tree in the middle of that garden that was called the knowledge of tree of life. That was a tree that they were going to have the opportunity as they matured, as they became adults, that God would have allowed them to eat from Ah, but, you know, they were, like all children, curious. So they enjoyed this, this bliss for a while, as we all do. But then they went on to that next phase. Oops, excuse me. My hat doesn't want to stay on, so we'll take it off. We'll go to the next phase. It is that rebellious teenage phase. So we grow to that point where we think we're all this, we're, 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 we're just big stuff, Right? We get to be teenagers, we think we know everything. We know more than our parents. We know more than our teachers. And so we start to rebel. We might be 13 years of age. We see that beautiful, uh, that beautiful Corvette, 1962 Corvette, our, our, uh, that our dad has sitting in the garage. And we say, oh, I'm mature enough to drive that. We take it out and we wreck it, right? We do stupid stuff when we're young. We're rebellious. Well, this is what happened, you see, to humanity. See, that little baby, that little toddler, that those toddlers, Adam and Eve, they grew to the point where they just think they didn't need God anymore. And so they looked at that tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and they said, you know what, we want some of this for ourselves. We don't need God in our lives anymore, so we're going to eat of that. And so there is that rebellious teenage phase. Well, that just can't be stood. That can't be tolerated. You can't allow people to get away with it. Because what happens if we, teenagers, with all those hormones running through our bodies, think that we know everything, gain all of the knowledge of the universe? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. We make an atomic bomb that can kill people. That's what we do. We make better weapons to kill people so we can compose our, impose our will upon people, right? We stack the economic systems so we can make ourselves more important than other people. This is what we do as rebellious teenagers. We stack the system in our favor because we think we are the most important person in the universe. But at some point, hopefully end of high school, maybe by the time we get to college, something starts changing in our life. And we move on to that young adulthood. What happens in this young adulthood? We become curious. There's a bigger world beyond ourselves. And it's at this point that we can receive and are willing to receive that precious gift. Ah, oh, you see back here we have the gift of Jesus Christ. But for those of us, you could call him Professor or Dr. Jesus. He came along and said, I have some important things that I want to share with you. And so he taught his disciples his important things. And they were ready for it because they finally matured beyond 
that rebellious teenage face. They were ready to listen. They finally understood that they didn't have all the answers to the world. And so they sat at his feet, this precious gift of Jesus, for years upon years upon years, three years, sitting at the feet of Dr. Je Jesus. But you know, people didn't like Jesus' message. See, Dr. Jesus rubbed people the wrong way. He was talking about this thing called love. You know, some people were still in that rebellious teenage phase. They didn't want to hear about the love that God had to bring to us in Jesus Christ. Because guess what love does? Love all of a sudden convicts us that, you know, maybe I can't impose my will upon you, you anymore. Maybe making an atomic bomb isn't the best thing in the world for loving this world. Now, let me just stop for a minute and get serious. I mentioned at the beginning of the announcements for today that there are many churches that are running roughshod straight into opening the doors of their congregation because it's their right as citizens of this country. I said to you, they're probably right. It is probably our right as a congregation to open our doors right now. As far as I'm concerned, they're like rebellious teenagers. They forget that we Christians are to be known by what? Our love. Opening our doors just to prove to everybody we have a right. We're rebellious teenagers. Teenagers are concerned about their rights at the expense of other people. A Christian is concerned about how best to love people. This is what Jesus came to bring. That rubbed people the wrong way, in particular the scribes and the Pharisees, many of the religious leaders, who were still rebellious teenagers. They wanted to impose their will upon everybody else. And so what did they do? They took this precious gift. They crucified him. Ha! But you see, Jesus, Dr. Jesus, you know, he isn't just a messenger of God's love. He is God's love. And you can try to kill God's love. But the great news about God's love, it just is relentless. It keeps coming back for us. No matter how many times we try to kill it or excise it from our lives, Dr. Jesus, the Jesus of love, keeps coming back for us. He raises again and is relentless in his pursuit of us. So with gratitude that we receive this precious gift, and we understand that there's more to this gift than, and behind this Dr. Jesus than just a teacher. He is the one who's come to love us. But now we come to Ascension Day. It's graduation day today. It's Ascension Day. Dr. Jesus says, you finally learned what I've wanted you to learn. That what it means to be a person of God is not to impose your will upon everybody else, but to love others as I have loved you, even if it means giving up your life for them. This is the love of Jesus Christ. We've now become young adults in this graduation day, and uh, somehow we've gotten through that angst and those hormones and the destruction. Maybe not completely. We're still a work in progress, aren't we? We've, we, we are finally done at the university level. It's time for us to move on. But, you know, all of a sudden we're struck by a little bit of fear, aren't we? How can we do this? Our, our doctor, Jesus says, you know what? I've taught you everything I need you to know. And so I'm going to go away to the Father. It's for your best interest. I don't know if you've ever had a professor that so impressed you, that you loved so much, and you had all those years maybe listening to a professor, taking every class you could when you were in college. I had several professors that made such a massive impact in my life. And when I graduated, I'm like, <gasps> Now I've got to do this stuff on my own. It's kind of scary. Well, can't you just stay with me for a little while? No, it's time for you to graduate. It's time for you to take what you've learned, and it's time for you to take it out into the world and make a difference. So I'm standing up here today and saying, it's your graduation day. It's time for you to leave this place and make a difference in the world. I know you're scared, aren't you? What happens if you make a mistake? Oh, well, there's the good news. Because now we're into young adulthood. And that is a challenge. This is what it feels like, isn't it, when you become a young adult? All of a sudden, you're carrying your own leash. You're like, what do I do? 
Where do I go? Oh no, it's just such a terrible thing. There's nobody there to chart the direction for your life. See, here's the problem with a lot of Christians and many churches and many pastors. They want to be told what to do. <laughs> Love is not a list of rules and regulations. Love is something that's contextual depending on the person you, you lo are loving and the gifts that you have, the relationship that you have with that person. That's what Jesus tried to teach us. And he told us that he was giving us all the tools necessary to make an evaluation how we are best to love people around us. So I am here to tell you, going back to our theme for the day, the best way to love this world is not to be like a rebellious teen who says, I've got to have my right to go to my church. Open my doors, this damn government. How dare they oppress me like this? No, you know what? A Christian who's graduated from the University of Jesus says, no. I've got to be a good citizen of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I've got to be a loving neighbor to those around me. I've got to do what's in the best interest. I'm not worried about my rights. I'm concerned about how best to love you. Oh, that's what we're called to do. We've been given the tools by Dr. Jesus to do this. But that doesn't mean I've outgrown my need for Jesus or for the Father. I've never outgrown him. You know, as I mentioned to you, the professors who made a difference I, uh, to me in my life, sometimes I'll go back and read the notes that I used to take when I was in their classes, and, and I'm inspired and transformed me. I remember the, the lessons that they taught me. They are an inspiration to me. And here's the great news. On occasion, I've actually been able to go and talk to them. Say, you know what? This is what I thought. Now that I've actually taken what you've taught me and applied to real life, boy, it's really a challenge. They say, yeah, tell me about it. But they're still there for me. We haven't outgrown our need for the Father. We haven't outgrown our need for Jesus. And so here we go to the next thing. Oh, what does this mean? This means in life, you're going to make a whole lot of mistakes. What the heck is Bob Ross being up there? Well, you know, we always say in the church, you know, do what Jesus did, right? Well, that's true. But we should be a lot like Bob Ross. You know, Bob Ross, he wasn't the greatest painter in the world, but he was definitely one of the most entertaining and most kind men in the world. And he would make a mistake and say, oh, so I made a mistake there. Well, you can just kind of do this with it. Cover it over, paint it over, or make it a part of your picture. There are all sorts of mistakes in this picture. He never, ever once panicked about a mistake when he was painting a picture. It just happened. Okay, well, you know, work with that mistake. So you see, we need to be more like Bob Ross. We're going to fail. Fail to love. We're going to make some mistakes. We're not always going to take to heart the lessons that Jesus has taught us. Well, be like Bob Ross. You make a mistake, say, oops, I made a mistake. I'll work with it. And you know what? <clears throat> it then becomes a beautiful painting and a wonderful picture. Despite the mistake, you know it's there. It's okay. You look at one of his paintings, you would never know that they're there. Same thing's true with us. Oh, you made a mistake. Okay, I failed to love appropriately this time. Oh, okay, well, I learned. I'm going to make that a part of my tapestry, a part of my picture that I'm painting in God's honor. Oh, but here's the great news. Since Jesus has left us, we kind of graduated, we're kind of moving on. He's left us to go in ascension day to heaven, and it's our graduation day. He says, oh, but you know what? I'm not leaving you entirely. Oh, next week we're going to turn, learn about the Holy Spirit. He's given us a comforter to see us through, to help us make better decisions to be the people of love he has made us to be. So, here we are. Back to the last one here, Chris. It is now Ascension Day. It's your graduation day. You have not grown the need for Jesus, but Jesus has taught us what we need to get through this life so that we might be better lovers of this world. It is time for us to grow up beyond our selfish ambitions, our desires to impose our, our rights. Instead, we become people of love. They will know we are Christians by our love. And so I encourage you to leave this place today 
as great citizens of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, or wherever you may be watching this from, I encourage you to leave this place today as graduates of the University of Jesus and go be a lover for the sake of Jesus Christ in this world. For it's Ascension Day. It's your day of graduation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks again for the graduation day, Ascension Day, where you finally told your church, it's time. It's time for you to do what I've been teaching you to do. You've been teaching us how to love. So we pray, God, that you would help us to better love the people around us. God, it's not about insisting upon our rights. The Bible doesn't say you'll be known by the rights that you have. The Bible says it will be known by the love that we have. So on this graduation day, this day of ascension, this day that we celebrate, you're leaving us to go to the kingdom of heaven. It's not because you left us to go away forever. It's because you trust us to do the right thing and to love one another. For this we give thanks. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to prepare for him for the day. Um, Professor Jones got to go. We're going to turn it back over to Pastor Dave. Professor Jones, for meeting with us today. Let's continue our worship today with the singing of our hymn of the day. Bye, bye. 
together the faith that unites us in Jesus Christ. Let us be one together in one accord for the faith that we share. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the mercy that you shower upon us for protecting us thus far. We know that there are many families who continue to struggle with illness, being separated from their families with despair in this time, for those who struggle to put food on the table, for those who spent their lifetime building up a business that right now, just over these last months, maybe is being ripped from them, their whole future. And we know that there are concerns multiplied over and over, not just here in Pennsylvania, but all throughout the United States, all throughout this world, God. And there are more people with less than what we have that don't know how to put food on their table. And so we pray for your mercy to be upon them. God, we know that there have been those who have touched, those who I have known who have been touched, uh, by this coronavirus, folks who have died, folks who have had the most important person in their life taken from them. One of our partner parishes, the pastor is now bearing this day, and this week, I should say, a husband and wife, the wife who died of coronavirus, and then two days later he died, and so they've waited to do the funeral for both of them together. God, these tragedies are being played out all over. So we pray that you continue to protect us, God. 
and help us to be kind to one another, to those who have been working on our behalf to put food on our tables, God, those in the grocery store. Sometimes we can be so intolerant and impatient as certain stores open up again, trying to struggle with this new normal, so to speak, of how do we serve people in a safe manner. God, it's easy once again to be impatient. But God, we pray that you'd help us, above all, to be patient and kind to one another. Understanding that people are doing the best that we can amidst some very difficult circumstances. Continue to be with our political leaders. And I pray for both sides, God. I don't understand Christians who only pray for one side. I pray for President Trump. I pray for a Governor Wolf. One's a Republican, one's a Democrat. I want them both to be successful. Because for them both to be successful means prosperity for a country and it means healing for a people. So we continue to lift up in prayer. All of those leaders, whatever parties they might represent, that most importantly they would represent life and they would represent their people to the best of their ability. They're going to make mistakes. But God, we can be like Bob Ross when we make mistakes. We just paint a new picture. So continue to guide and direct our path. Thank you for this Ascension Day. We are just so grateful for your presence in our lives. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may you receive the Lord's blessing this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth from this place with a song in our hearts. Let us sing together our closing hymn, our final song of this season of Easter. Bow.
peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.